Thank you to Samantha and Mel, I'm going to open and read these at the end of the video. Bratz, a brand of children's doll, recently a YouTube channel, and more relevantly, me. I made this video just for the title, but whatever, let's get this started. What is Bratz TV? The mainly weird part of Bratz TV is that I'm not a part of it, even though it's clearly named after me. Hmm. <laughs> However, Bratz TV is also a YouTube channel digital media network thing. Launched in 2007 by Rob Fisherman and Darren Latchman, Rob Fisherman's Wikipedia page describing him as an American entrepreneur and writer, which translates to douchebag, entrepreneur and writer. Just gonna let that joke sit, see if it hits for those in the back. They're at the back behind aquarium glass because I don't want to catch anything. Their focus is on producing high quality teenage shows available for free on digital platforms because they saw a gap in the market. And they were right. 1.2 billion views and 4.6 million subscribers since 2017. Slightly better than me, I guess. Not that it matters or anything. <laughs> Am I gonna get a play button this year? No. And you know what? I'm fine with that. Branch TV has a wide range of shows. I'm sure people have heard of them from other YouTube videos. Chicken Girls, which has run for seven seasons, Attaway General, the latest show they've made, Crown Lake, Manny, and the one we're talking about today, Total Eclipse. Why are we going to talk about Total Eclipse? To be honest, I picked a show from random, so that's what you get. Total Eclipse Season 5. Yep, Season 5. I could not be bothered to watch the first four, and I'm pretty sure this was the last season too, so... Look, it's a teen drama. I think I can get the gist of it. Total Eclipse takes place in Millwood, a rural American town in the middle of nowhere, with about ten main characters. Or five... Honestly, I have no idea. I watched the entire season and I could not tell you what this show is about. I'm pretty sure it's about these five girls we meet at the start. They all have names, I'm pretty sure. But the only one I remember is Diana, because I hate Diana. She's the worst. Going from what other YouTube channels have said about this stuff, I expected it to be awful. Don't get me wrong, it's not great, but it's not bad. The acting is not great, which you could expect from the fact they use TikTok stars as actors. Not gonna lie, acting is a bit of a step up from moving your mouth to someone else's words like a ventriloquist dummy. The storylines are shallower than a kid's play pool, and there are too many storylines to actually fit into a 10 minute video, which some of these don't even make it to. God knows how many scenes they bash out in a day, I'm gonna assume all of them fly in these TikTok stars for one day, shoot everything, and then send it to some poor editor that has to make something that makes the two and a half million dollar investors happy. Do you think they've got a return on that investment yet? Like, how much do these TikTok stars make from this video? Not that I'm looking for an alternative income source, I'm not doing that poorly. <laughs> I can believe that they film in a day though, as these scenes consist of bedrooms, coffee shop, ice cream shop, classroom, outside house, grass. So around four out of six of the scenes were shot in some warehouse, and the other two were shot outside the warehouse. Explaining the plot of the show is going to be difficult, so I'm going to try and break it up into sections and give you the highlights. I didn't write their names down in my notes, and any additional information left my brain the moment I stopped watching. I'm going to be referring to these characters by their one trait that I remember. Juice Girl, Loud Girl, Journalist, Dance Girl, Diana. Boy 1, Boy 2, Boy 3. We're first introduced to our main characters as the Coven of Witches, calling to the stars for mystical knowledge. They just look at a map of stars on their phone, and somehow just looking at Libra is enough for a future prediction. Which you can see anywhere between April and July, but no, tell me again how astrology isn't a bunch of bullshit. You'd think that astrology plays a big part in this show. It's called Total Eclipse, that's kind of spacey. The intro sequence is all space themed and constellation themed, and the first scene of the new season is astrology. 
But no, you would be wrong. Without watching the first season, I assume what happened is someone had an idea for a show that was linked to astrology. All the people were linked to star signs and astrology. And then the writer just forgot and started writing the most generic teen drama possible. When you look up generic teen drama in the dictionary, you won't find it because it's not a single word, but if you could, it would be this show. The first episode is like 10 minutes long, and when I wrote my notes, I had a note at 44 seconds in, and then the next one was 9 minutes in. So from that, you can pretty much tell nothing of worth happened. This will be a theme. Nothing happening. It's almost like having three different storylines in the space of nine minutes is a bad idea. Whoa, Tatiana, are you the next Ernest Hemingway with these genius writing insights? The second episode has more going on. It's meaningless, but it's got more going on. Juice Girl and Lao Girl are filming a morning routine, even though they are literal children, and who must the fuck has a morning routine at their age? Just wake up, it's not that hard hard, she says, taking an hour and a half to get out of bed this morning. Nothing shows the type of dialogue in this show better than this scene between Dance Girl and Boy Free, which is the equivalent of NPCs talking together in a video game. Wait, don't I know you from Magic Moves? Felicity's class. Yeah, I think you do. Cassie, right? It's Jerry. I remember. How's it going? Great. I'm at Highland Dance Conservatory now. Are you still dancing? When I can. Well, the auditions for next semester are coming up. You should apply. You think so? Yeah. Ooh, do you feel the chemistry? Because to me it feels like someone just stepped over my grave. It's not the TikTok actor's fault the writing is as dry and flavourless as an original Pringle. Hell, it's not even the writers being bad. I'm sure they could write better, but when a company gives you the direction of write a teen drama, it's not like you're gonna give a shit at how deep your writing will be. The direction the actors got was probably look interested, and then the director realised that even he couldn't look interested at his own work and then went home for the day. The only reason I could be bothered to continue watching this show is because I developed an unholy hatred for one of the characters, Diane. I didn't watch the previous season, so I don't know exactly what she did, but I hate her. Boy One, I think his name is Sam or something. Honestly, it does not matter. Boy One wants to be part of this band who is going out on tour, but Diana in the last season stopped him from being in the band because if he did, he wouldn't get school points or something. Well, whatever that thing Americans need to get into college other than the 80 grand. Boy One does not care about school. He didn't want to go to college. He has the talent and the means to be part of an already nationally touring band. Why would he need to go to summer school? Diane, why? The rest of the scenes with Diane and Boy One are literally him saying, I didn't want to be here, why am I here? And Diane saying, well, I wanted to be here in school, so you have to be in school, and that making no sense. Like, when in life will I ever need to know the difference between two rocks? Um, in two months when we need to pass this class, so you can graduate and I can keep my GPA up? I've spent way too much time memorizing useless information. Okay, sorry, but that's what school is. Grow up and get over it. Wow. Look at that depressing realism that the only reason you learn stuff in school is just to pass a test so you can go learn the actual stuff you want to. Basically making a statement on the fact that most of the education system is filler, taking time out of kids' days that they could be using to learn useful skills, or discovering what makes them happy, like this guy's band that you stopped him going into. Or something. Very brave statement from Bratz TV. wasn't expecting that. Also, in this school, we have... Oh, I, I didn't give him a definition. Boy 4, who is a student teacher. Student teacher. Please, tell me that is not an actual thing in America. Oh my god. They would not last five seconds in an English school. Adult teachers get bullied in English school. How is someone your own age meant to control a class? There are seven episodes in total and describing the plot for the whole thing would be mind-numbing and I don't want to do it. So instead, let me just sum it up. 
The girls start a war over which shop is better, the ice cream store or the coffee store. The mob threatens Junior, the owner of the coffee store, for some reason. The girls then hold a meeting with the mob and convince them to let Junior keep the coffee shop because they are going to turn it into a juice bar. And for some reason, the mob is like, yeah, okay, that's cool. Trust me, you're confused, but watching it doesn't make it any easier. Boy 2, who has been decently okay guy, and I haven't had any reason to hate him at all, even though apparently in the previous seasons he kissed four of the five main girls, or dated them at the same time or something, and he's meant to be a dick, even though he's like literally the nicest character in the entire show the entire time. Except suddenly out of nowhere in the last episode he betrays Dance Girl who he's been now dating. Dance Girl steals the keys to the ice cream store and brings a bunch of fruit to the juice bar which I'm not sure how. They don't actually explain it, she literally walks in with the fruit and they say where's all this fruit come from and she says oh long story. Like, did she steal the fruit from the ice cream store, which is very much a crime? I don't know. Also, the mob is in the juice bar for some reason, literally just having some juice. They're called the Roach Gang. What? More importantly though, as this is the storyline I actually cared about, Boy One decides, yeah, I guess Diane was right to care about my education, and just decides to finish his summer school two weeks early, which is apparently something he could have done at any point. And then he goes and joins the band, so basically there was no real threat to his future and his entire story arc was pointless, which should sum up this show. Pointless. The show has no direction, no morals, no talent. But it's all over now, so who cares? <laughs> Alright, let me open these parcels real quick. So we've got a uh, letter from uh, Mel, which is got a picture of uh, some British soldiers firing guns, which we always like to see. Dear Miss Tassie, I apologise that this is not a gift, but I hope this looks nice on your wall nonetheless. It will. I like British soldiers. Possibly shooting Americans. Uh, I love your humour. The joke's about being the best. It's quite refreshing for, uh, than hearing about YouTubers saying, I hate myself jokes. Reenactors period dress fire their muskets in honour of the king's birthday. Well, I mean, why not the queen's birthday? Like, why not just have the monarchy? Like, America should be a kingdom and they should be under our queen. And we got this parcel here, which took $38 to get here, which is horrifying. <laughs> a letter. Gay stickers. A... Ooh, what's this? Like, it's in Japanese. <laughs> The writing, so I don't know if it's like, one of them looks like a sweet, and I don't want to eat it if it's like a bath bomb. <laughs> oh! oh my god, it's a fucking walrus. It's a little walrus statue. This is, oh that's, that's, that's good. Oh I like him, you can't see him, he's on top of my computer. How can I, I'm gonna put him here for now. He's gonna sit there. <laughs> I love walruses. <laughs> I love how with walruses, like, clay works so well for them because, like, any scratches, like, in the clay that normally on any other statue would be, like, imperfections, like, on the bottom and the, just where, like, it's been, like, squished a little bit. It, that's fine, that's how walruses look. <laughs> just, just a blob of imperfection. <laughs> oh, God wept when these things leapt out of the ocean. There's a little sheep in this bag. What is this? Is this a Pokemon? I don't know why I smelled it. I just thought, like, what, what if it... What if it's food? <laughs> such a fat bitch. <laughs> I'm gonna put it on the walrus. Oh yeah, and I do apologise, this, this... I haven't done a lot of videos recently, but also I only just got these. Um, I know that this one was de delivered, like, on the 2nd of uh, October. Um, second of, no, so second of September, sorry. Uh, so I didn't get it for like a month since it got delivered. Uh, that's just because I only check my mail once a month, um, because I don't like travelling into big cities uh, more than once a month. Because of current events. What are these? <gasps> oh! Oh, I knew who, I know who sent this! I st it's drawings which is gonna get blurred out with the light. Oh, there you go. Oh my god, my cam cam camera actually adapts to light. What the fuck? I didn't even know it did that. Oh, I 
I love that one. Yes, I love that that drawing of that dress. Ah, oh, fuck. There are so many dresses that I'd love to try one day. Like one leg. Ah, oh, one leg dress. Fuck. It's me riding a walrus. Greetings from Cali. You should have a hopefully intact walrus figure and a razor. Oh, it's an eraser. I don't want to use that as an eraser. It's a tiny little sheep. And a box from Little Tokyo and some pride stickers. I really like your videos. Yes, yeah, it's, it's um, my look or Lotus on Discord. I really don't know if I'm comfortable using that as an eraser because I know I'm just going to scrape its face off and I don't think I can do that. All right, thank you both for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. Uh, if you did, please leave a like. If you're new, please subscribe. Uh, but commenting on the video, that helps the most. I have a Patreon and an OnlyFans if you feel like you ever want to support one of them. I mentioned it in the last video, but please treat the OnlyFans just as a regular support site, just like Patreon. The only bonus is every now and again, you get to see my ass. Don't treat it as a, you pay for something and you get a service because I, I'm not consistent. I have a Twitter, I have an Instagram, and I have a Discord. Please go follow me on all of those. Thank you guys for watching. I hope you enjoyed, and I hope to see you in the next video. Bye.